Yes, everybody. Hello and welcome to Tent 2. We will have an event in English right now. Um, and you can, of course, ask questions here in uh, the tent and online. Uh, the event would be, uh, will be about the LGBT plus in the Danish realm. Uh, Abdel, would you uh, come up and uh, take it from here? I will, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm a player club in Denmark. In Denmark, we clap. Ah, uh, thank you so much, guys. Welcome to this humanitarian action at the Danish Institute for Human Rights. This session is uh, about the LGBTI plus in the unity of the Danish realm, rights, challenges, challenges and uh, prospects for the future. My name is Abdel Aziz Mahmoud. I'm a Danish journalist, uh, writer, author, and uh, a TV host. And for you who doesn't know who I am, I'm the Danish Oprah. I'm the Danish Oprah. Prøv at høre, det ved de ikke. Det kan man godt sige. Det kan de jo ikke finde ud af. Okay, Human, <laughs> Humanity in Action and the Institute uh, for Human Rights have chosen uh, this focus because there is still a great um, deal uh, uh, need to, to bring about these um, difficulties in the realm uh, concerning the rights of the LGBTI people uh, across Denmark, Greenland and the Faroe Islands. Personally, I'm so pleased to be like a Muslim gay here and saying there, you, you guys have a problem, so you should fix, uh, fix amongst yourselves. Because I'm used to people pointing fingers at, at us, so this is very, very delightful for me. LGBTI people still face discrimination and uh, hate crimes in this country, in the, in the streets, on social media, uh, and in society in general. And um, this group of people uh, still experience difficulties about be, being able to open up about their sexuality, in their workplace, in their families. Uh, and uh, we'll hear four short presentations from our guests uh, shortly, and um, they will... Uh, have different focuses, and uh, after that, you can be, you can, you're pleased to to uh, ask questions, or just if you want to join in with your own uh, experiences, or ask for my phone number. Okay, yes, I'm a bit over the top. I'm, please bear with me. Uh, so, without further ado, um, please welcome Michaela. Freisleben and Michaela is uh, here and, uh, and standing in for Morten Wüldeke, who can be with us today. He's head of gender equality and equal treatment. So uh, we, we instead today have the National Director of Humanity in Action Denmark, and she will read his presentation, right? So without further ado, please give her a hand, Michaela. Hello. Everybody, I'm very happy to be here today and uh, reading uh, Morden's um, presentation for you. So, but I'm sorry that I won't be able to take any questions afterwards because this is not my field of expertise. But I hope you will get everything from this. So, thanks for your introduction, Abdel. Initially, I would like to thank Humanity in Action for inviting the Danish Institute for Human Rights and me, Morten, to participate in this panel session on the rights, challenges and prospects for LGBTIQ plus people in, in the unity of the Danish realm. I hope that we will have a positive as well as fruitful dialogue this afternoon. In my presentation, I will try to give a short overview of the situation for LGBTIQ plus people's rights and living conditions in Denmark 2020, pointing out to the challenges and needs for improving Danish legislation, as well as combating appropriate gender stereotypes in all levels of our society. If we look at it from a global perspective, we will have to admit that Denmark is in the front when it comes to protecting rights, protecting against non-discrimination and securing good living conditions for LGBTIQ plus people. We can see the contrast if we can compare with, for instance, Poland, where municipalities have declared themselves for LGBTIQ free zones or with the U.S. where LGBTIQ plus people's basic rights to protection against discrimination is withdrawn by the Trump administration, or with some of the African countries where homosexuality is simply criminalized. This also to remind us that homophobia, transphobia, etc. is emerging in all parts of the world, both in the neighboring countries and out in the world. 
the picture looks somehow different in Denmark. Last year, a survey of the values and attitudes among citizens in Denmark showed that only 4% of the Danes find homosexuality not at all acceptable in 2017. In 1981, where this value service was conducted for the first time, 34% of the Danes responded that they did not at all accept homosexuality. From 34% in 1981 to only 4% in 2017 is a positive change in just three to four decades in Denmark. In general, the attitudes to homosexuality have moved from ambivalence to broad acceptance of homosexuality. It is a very positive trend. Unfortunately, the survey does not include bisexuality, transgender, intersex, or other sexual or gendered categories. Though the majorities of the Danes have developed more positive and accepting attitudes to homosexuality, this does not mean that LGBTIQ people are free from experiencing discrimination, violation, hate speech, and hate crimes in their everyday life, and will not have their physical and mental well-being adversely affected there is still a minority of people that are not accepting homosexuality. Negative attitudes are especially prevalent among the older population groups and among men with shorter educations. But we do also still experience homophobia among young people in schools and vocational institutions. And LGBTIQ plus people experience hate speech on social media and hate crimes in the streets. Some of it Some of it is rooted in severe negativity and phobia, but most of it is hopefully due to lack of knowledge and consciousness. If we look at a new study published this summer that explores stigma and challenges of being LGBTI in Denmark, the same trends appear. Stigmatization and negative attitudes from the surrounding environment is still today an issue for a substantial part of LGBTI plus people in Denmark. With a small majority of LGBTI people generally experience positive attitudes from their surroundings with regard to their LGBTI identity, a substantial minority, 47%, experience problems, negative reactions, discrimination, and stigmatization related to their sexuality or gender identity. The study shows that limited openness about sexuality or gender identity and, and experienced stigmatization are inversely linked to psychological well-being and related to loneliness among LGBTIQ plus people. Feelings of loneliness are found to be five times greater among LGBTI people than in the general population. This main finding of the study is worrying. And further, if we look at the LGBT people's experience of negative reactions and discrimination, we see another worrying trend. About every third of the LGBT population has experienced discrimination because of their sexuality in the past year. 56% of transgender people have experienced discrimination because of their gender identity in the past year. The typical place or platform of LGBT people's experience discrimination is social media in the streets and public places, in traditional media like newspaper, radio and TV, and in the nightlife and discos. The experience discrimination is typically taking the form of condescending or hateful speech, as well as unwanted or excessive attention. In relation to how LGBT people cope with the attitudes and experience discrimination from their surroundings, the study shows that LGBT people are using different strategies. About every third LGBT person has avoided staying or moving in certain places in public space because of their LGBT identity in the past year. This coping strategy is specially used among transgender people. A substantial part of LGBT people does also adapt their actions and or appearance in public spaces to avoid stigmatization or unpleasant forms of attention. Whereas male homosexuals feel violence and verbal threats, transgendered people mention the fear of being seen by people that does not know of their identity. But for all four groups, LGBT, more than half of them avoid specific places because they fear harassment and being yelled at. Overall, I think the study draws a worrying picture of the situation in Denmark. Other studies reach similar conclusions. 
It is obvious that a substantial part of LGBTIQ plus people is exposed to stigmatization and discrimination and hate speech and hate acts in the public in Denmark. In a new study that the Danish Institute for Human Rights conducted during the COVID-19 quarantine, we documented that minorities like LGBTI plus people have been particularly exposed to hatred during the COVID-19 epidemic. Interestingly, a lot of the LGBTI plus respondents reported about experiences with hate speech and hate acts in public space or online that were not related to the COVID-19. It was just incidents that happened in their everyday life. This is a horrible situation. Hate in the public sphere in its various expressions must be both prevented and combated so that we ensure that Denmark is an open and inclusive society with equal opportunities and without fear of verbal or physical assault because of one's sexual orientation, gender characteristics, gender identity, or gender expression. Also, at the personal level, it is a disaster because as I mentioned above, these incidents can have major personal consequences in the form of general insecurity, poor well-being and loneliness, self-regulation of how and where to move in public space. It is, of course, of great importance that we secure an effective legal protection of sexual and gendered minorities in Denmark. And improvements are also needed here. The protection of sexual orientation would be strengthened and more effective if the grounds of protection were covered by discrimination laws outside the labor market. On this background, the Danish Institute for Human Rights recommends that sexual orientation is added as explicit grounds for protection in, dis in Danish discrimination legislation outside the labor market, with access to take case to the Equal Treatment Board. Similarly, the Danish Institute for Human Rights commends, recommends that gender characteristics, gender identity, and gender expressions are added as explicit grounds for protection in Danish discrimination legislation, both within and outside the labor market. This would ensure an explicit protection of transgender and intersex people, with a partic uh, which are particularly vulnerable groups. In relation to hate crimes, the Danish Penal Code's rules on aggravating circumstances in section 81.6 lists several criteria that may constitute aggravating circumstances in, rela in relation to sentencing. Gender characteristics, gender expressions, and gender identity do not appear in this listing. On this background, the Danish Institute for Human Rights recommends that gender characteristics, gender identity, and gender expressions are added as motive ground, grounds so that the protection of gender, gender and intersex, um, I'm sorry, that, so that the protection of transgender and intersex people becomes explicit. Effective legal protection does not change the world alone, but it sets out and ensures protection of fundamental human rights. In addition to legislation, we need to move forward with combating hatred and phobia in all its expressions and strengthen the daily challenge of the dominating inappropriate social norms and stereotypes related to gender and sexuality in all levels of society. In schools, in families, in higher education, in media, in health systems, in sports, in labor market, etc. Finally, I would like just to point out two, or to highlight two positive prospects for the future. One important thing is that the new and younger generations seem to have fundamental different take and view on matters of sexuality and gender. They seem to be more relaxed and more accepting to different ways of living and expressing their gender and sexuality. More variations and colors. This will hopefully lead to a more including society. The other important trend I would like to highlight is that LGBTIQ activism is no longer going on only in the big cities, like in Copenhagen, Aarhus, Odense, or Aalborg, the four biggest cities in Denmark. In the last 10 years, we have seen new networks and organizations arising and working from regional and local settings. The internet does play an important role in this new LGBTIQ mobilization. We have also seen prides and demonstrations against harassment and hate, hate crimes in small cities. 
and local groups across the country are gathering and setting up networks for young people who need counseling or, or a safe space. This development is definitely helping a lot of young LGBTIQ people, but it will hopefully also make way for would make way for an even broader change in the general population's attitudes towards LGBTIQ people as they become more visible, <clears throat> not only in Copenhagen or in TV, but also in local newspapers, in local schools, and in local streets. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michaela. Standing in for Morten Vildeke. Thank you. And now, um, the following three people will be our panel, so I'll introduce them one by one, and each person will come up and give us a, a, a short presentation. So first of all, we have uh, Eva Maria Lassen, who is a senior researcher also at the Danish Institute for Human Rights, uh, and she will talk about religion and uh, all about the LGBTI plus rights in Greenland, Faroe Islands, and Denmark. Eva Maria, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before I start, I would like to tell you that I have a little stammer, so sometimes it uh, takes a little time to conclude a sentence. So now we have heard about Denmark and the situation there. And does that actually matter to the Faroe Islands and Greenland how it is in Denmark? That's an interesting question since we are united in the realm of Denmark. And because I'm a specialist in religion and human rights, I, of course, am especially interested in, okay, how does it actually look? Is there any interaction between Denmark, the Faroe Island, and Greenland in this area? And um, I am uh, excited to tell you that there is indeed a very big interaction in this area. And I, I would like to illustrate this uh, by means of the same-sex marriage legislation from 2012 in Denmark. Uh, but before I do that, I have to uh, tell you a little bit more boring, technical, legal stuff, because Denmark and, and Greenland and the Faroe Islands are constitutionally and legally uh, linked together in, 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 a, in, a specific, um, in a specific way. So Greenland has self-rule and the Faroe Islands have home rule. And in both instances, it means that there are a lot of areas that uh, the, um, has been uh, established so that the power has been transferred from Denmark to Greenland and from, Gre and from Denmark to the Faroe Islands. And that can be small things and big things. So for instance, if you take Greenland, the 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 um, the, pe the people's church has been uh, transferred. I mean, the people's church in Greenland has been transferred from Denmark to Greenland, so it's entirely Greenland's own uh, um, um, uh, own uh, domain. And the same applies to the Faroe Islands. It's also the taxation, for instance, has also been transferred to Greenland. It can also be very small things. So for instance, the regulation of the summertime has been transferred from the Danish parliament to the parliament of Greenland. So it, it's small and big things. And it's, and it's also something that is a, it's a very progressive uh, sort of movement towards more and more independence and self-rule or home rule. So for instance, in 2018, the family law, the power or, or, um, uh, has been transferred from Denmark uh, to the Faroe Islands. So it is something that happens sort of slowly over the time, and then you have different kinds of cooperation, for instance, about the police and things like that. So that's just a sort of technical uh, background. So that means that the areas where the competence has not been transferred still somehow belong to the Danish parliament, but only to a certain extent. So now I can tell you about the same sex marriage. And that was a law that was established in 2012 in Denmark. And according to the law, 
uh, it is a change in the marriage and divorce law. And then the paragraph one says, a marriage is a union between two people of the same gender or two people of different gender. So therefore, uh, it has been established that it is completely the same rights and it is the same, um, it is the same thing, uh, sort of legally speaking. And that uh, has replaced, uh, has, has replaced the law about registered partnership. So, and then it's interesting because then it says this law is applying to Denmark. It does not apply to the Faroe Islands and Greenland in the first section of the paragraph. And then the second part of the paragraph says, but the law can, uh, by royal assent, also be, be applicable to Greenland or the Faroe Islands according to the situation in each country. So that's very important. Then at the same time, there was another law that was established the same day, and that concerns the Danish People's Church, because according to this first law, then you can be married both in the church and in the city council. So then of course, because as you probably all know, uh, Christianity has had quite an uneasy relationship to homosexuality. Um, so, theref so therefore, uh, you could also see within the people's church, you could see different views on same-sex marriage. So you have, on the one uh, end, you have uh, people who think theologically it's uh, sinful with homosexual practice. You also have a big group who is saying it doesn't have anything to do with sin necessarily, but it is not a marriage if, if, if two people of the same gender have a union, because a marriage is um, something that is created, sort of institutionalized by God who created humankind in his image as man and woman. So therefore you cannot actually uh, uh, say that it is a marriage. And then you have, um, have a third group over here who says, uh, theological, there's no problem with having a same-sex marriage. So we just have to have another ritual which says spouses instead of man and woman. Uh, so there were discussions in the, in the people's uh, church and then in the end, and it was also a bit political and a lot of debate, then the states or the people's church said, okay, we will agree to this. And that's why the law actually came about so you could actually get married in the church. But then the second law says that uh, if a priest does not want because of his conscience to actually marry people of the same sex, then he or she can be exempted. But that law does not uh, potentially apply to Greenland and the Faroe Islands, and that's because the Faroe Islands uh, Church and the Greenland uh, People's Church have been transferred to the, realm, uh, uh, to the power of Greenland and the Faroe Islands. So they must deal with it themselves if they choose to have this law. So then what happens is that um, in, in uh, 2012, it was, it was made law in Denmark, same-sex marriage. Then a debate started in Greenland and the Faroe Island. Should we also, in Greenland and the Faroe Island, have this law? And that took two different directions. Because, and, and to make it short, in uh, Greenland, it was, it was embraced uh, quite wholesomely by the parliament and also by the people's church. So the bishop, uh, uh, she said, uh, I, I don't think there's anything theologically that talks against same-sex marriage. So therefore, it was established in uh, 2016 that you could have the same law uh, and, and then simply transfer it to Greenland. So then the Greenland parliament contacted the Danish parliament and the prime minister, I think, and then uh, uh, a, s a special royal decree was established, and then it became law. And then in, in Greenland, they have another law that talks about um, its own church, the 
people's church in Greenland. And that's a law from 2010 who says that if a priest does not want to perform a specific theological uh, 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 <coughs> excuse me, ceremony or a, a ritual, then he or she uh, should uh, tell the dean and the bishop, and then they will find a, um, a sort of way so that the priest uh, does not have to do it. So, the, so they already had that law, you could say. Then in the Faroe Island, it was the same thing that they also debated this Danish law, but they were much more critical towards it. So first, it was, I think, in 2013, it was in, in the parliament in the Faroe Islands, and it was actually turned down. And there you could see that the Christian voices, they were very strong in the political debate also. So there was a very much uh, sort of anti, uh, uh, sort of anti uh, gay marriages uh, that had a sort of Christian undertone. Um, but then in, uh, in 2016, um, it was again uh, uh, presented to Parliament, and there was again a lot of debate. And then they actually uh, decided that they would change the Danish law into a specific Fairy Islands law, and that uh, created a special situation where you could have a civil uh, same-sex marriage, but you couldn't have it in the church. And that's how it is in the Faroe Island. And then the Faroe Islands Parliament sent a letter to the Danish Parliament and said, we would like to have half of your law. And, then the, and uh, so then they also got that. Um, so that's the situation of same-sex marriage, and I think it's... a. a it's, it's a very interesting, I think, illustration of that there's a lot of flow between the t three different uh, components that constitute the realm of uh, Denmark, for better and some people could uh, uh, say for worse, but thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Eva Maria Larsen, thank you. And now I would like to present from the LGBT Faroya, um, Oda Ellingsgaard, Oda. And she will present the no equality without the majority. So um, yeah, let's give her a hand. Hello, hi, hi everyone. I actually made some slides so that I could stay on point and maybe on time as well. Uh, my name is Oda. I am from the Faroe Islands. I don't live there. I've lived in Denmark for many years. Um, but I would say that the rights of uh, our community is something that's very close to my heart. Um, so even though I'm not one of the fighters on the ground uh, back at home, I've sort of done what I can from here to support and um, trying to continue that today. So. I'll do my best to answer any questions and give a view on what's happening in the Faroes, but um, yeah, there might be some things that the, someone might be better equipped to, to, um, to tell you about. Um, to give you a quick snapshot of the situation in the Faroes, um, the LGBT organization, which is the, the letters that we're still using, we are having that discussion, um, was founded in 2011, um, but there was actually a lot of work done before that. We had um, an organization called Free Arboyen, um, which started in 2003, and I would say the people who started this were really the ones who were very brave in the Faroese community. Um, there was not a lot of talk about just sort of being gay, and anything beyond that was not talked about. Um, so I think when they started this conversation, they, they were very brave and took um, some hard hits. So in 2011, we organized the LGBT um, committee organization, which is, as it was before that and is today, run by volunteers. Um, we are working hard to try to get donations to support our work and rely on uh, members also supporting with that. Um, the initial work when we started the LGBT in the Faroe Islands was very much just to show that there are people in the Faroe Islands who are not straight. Um, and that in itself was, was a big deal. Um, so they came up with the slogan just sort of saying, we're here, we've always been here, and we will always be here. 
Um, and that was actually just to, to show that there are people who live different lives. Um, in 2012, the first, you could sort of say, official pride um, took place. We had had parades before, but not necessarily under the LGBT organization. Um, but this one was the one that was sort of the first big one, and it was quite surprising. We had 5,000 people showed up um, before we'd had sort of two, 300, and that was what we were expecting as well. Um, so that was one of those days where we realized, okay, people might actually be on our side and we could make something happen here. Um, so sort of fueling the positivity from that, um, and as Eva Maria mentioned, in 2012, um, sorry, in 2014, uh, the first proposal for the marriage equality was proposed and very quickly rejected. Um, that actually, I think, within the community that we had and the power that we were sort of seeing that we were starting to get, um, made us say, okay, no, we're actually gonna try to, to make this happen. Um, we then got politicians who really actively started to support our cause. Um, and then I think through years of, of lobbying, um, and then the more the, the topic was coming into the public space, the more visible some of the things that were against us were coming. And obviously with that backlash, I think people started more and more coming out in support of us. Um, so it was, it was quite tough for a long time. It was tough for people um, within our community. Um, the arguments against us were, were very harsh. Um, so it took a lot of resilience to, to keep that work going. And as I said, it is, it's an organization that's run by volunteers. So there were a lot of times where people were sort of looking and saying, I cannot do this anymore. Um, but um, we, uh, we, in 2017, succeeded um, and were able to get the, the law changed and sent the letter to Denmark, obviously with some things written in, so it's not fully in. Um, but it was passed with 18 votes in favor and 14 opposing. Um, it was, I can tell you, we were holding our breaths on the day. Um, it was, this was in 2017. In 2019, we again realized I think we all felt very fragile. We had an election, and even there, there were a lot of politicians whose, like, their first weapon, you could almost say, to get a, a vote was, if you vote for me, we will get, you know, marriage back to, to what it's supposed to be. Um, so it, it was quickly sort of rejected, and that that wasn't going to happen, but I think for all of us in the community, uh, we sort of felt how, how fragile that, that can be, and how quickly our rights could be taken away from us. Um, so since we have the, the marriage equality sort of set in law, we are today focusing our work around other rights and also including um, mental health, which was also um, mentioned in the first um, presentation. This is just an example of the campaign that we did. It basically just says, we're here. We've always been here. We love being Faroese and therefore we will always be here. Um, this is Boara. There were several other really brave people who, who stood forward and were willing to, to show that they were part of the Faroese society. Um, I would say for the LGBT organization, some of our main achievements, maybe I've been ambitious with my slides. I don't know if you can see what it says, but um, um, for us, what has been important is that our presence today in the Faroese society is, is pretty, you could say, normal. I mean, it's it's not as big as, you know, when, when these posters that I just saw what came out, people were shocked and, and it was a huge topic. I think today there are families of all constellations living in the Faroe Islands, living the lives that they should be. The challenge is, is that they are still missing legal protections. But um, when we don't talk about that, they can live a pretty decent life. Um, the Pride Parade has become a yearly tradition. We didn't have it this year because of Corona. And it was great to see that people actually missed it. So we were like, okay, we're, we're continuing with that. Um, as Eva Marie talked about the marriage equality, this, um, this was years and years of political lobbying, hard work, and, and persistent from our, our side. And as you mentioned, the, I would say the main opposing arguments to actually changing the law were religious. Um, and it's sometimes hard to hear those because there are LGBT people who are also religious. Um, so to hear from um, your parliamentary speakers talking about you in a way, th that's, that's hard for anyone, I think. Um, so um, that was, it was sort of this vision of the traditional family in God's eyes. Um, 
there was the view on the church in politics. The church is sort of supposed to be the people's church, um, and it's a state-funded organization, so there was a lot about aren't they supposed to embrace everyone, but they didn't want to sort of get into the conversation. Um, some believed that we were holding the church hostage, um, so that caused some interesting debates as well. Um, and under the new laws, Eva Marie mentioned, the um, couples can only get a civil um, registry, they cannot have a religious uh, ceremony, and that will only happen when the church decides to reverse that law or change that law for themselves. Um, the, the, um, the other arguments that we had, which were actually interesting, was why do you need to change this law? There's not that many of you anyway, um, which, yeah. Uh, <laughs> then we were told that um, because there were so few of us, that the public should decide. So we should have a public vote on this, um, which was then interesting because then Gallup did a survey which actually showed a majority of the people would have voted in favor of it. Um, and then I think that then never happened. Um, there was also a big argument, I would say, really leading up to the vote that same-sex couples could get the same protections under a civil union and why would we then have to change this into marriage? Why were we so obsessed with being married when there weren't that many of us? Um, so those were sort of the, the things that, um, that we were hearing, but, but it passed in the end. Um, another achievement that we were actually quite proud of was to get the free HPV um, vaccine for, for boys. It was previously only available for girls um, because people simply thought that women and men only have sex and therefore boys didn't need any protection. What we're looking at for the future, there's, there's five areas that we're, that we're focusing on. Um, Anti-discrimination laws in the workplace, which we have none, they've been proposed. Um, and they've been rejected. So we're working very much with some of the political allies that we have to um, propose a new law that could protect um, our members. Donating blood. Um, men who have not had sexual relations with other men can now donate blood within six months. Um, we would like to get that down to three or four months as it is in other countries. Um, when it comes to family matters, couples do not have the same protections. Um, so there's not parental leave um, for the other partner. Um, there's only the biological parent, um, so that causes some, um, some disparity. Um, you cannot be the legal guardian to a partner's biological child um, under sort of the, the, to get the parental leave. And lesbian couples do not have the same um, right to free fertility treatment as they do in the, the Danish realm. Um, we are looking into trans rights. Um, there are people on the ground in the Faroe Islands who are experts on this. I, I, I am not, but um, I know that there is, there is no treatment offered in the Faroe Islands, but that is not that uncommon. Anytime you need sort of advanced treatment for anything in the Faroe Islands, you're, you're sent to Denmark, um, which you're also if, if you go into these programs. Um, but there is an opportunity for anyone to go to Denmark to get the free treatment and get everything that you would get here in Denmark. The challenge is, is that when you're in the Faroe Islands, there's no legal um, protection for you as an individual. Um, so we're working a lot on that to actually make sure that all people in the Faroe East community are protected under the law. Um, the final project that we're getting close to at the moment is um, looking out for the mental health of the LGBT community in the Faroe Islands. We also did a survey, we got some scary results. Um, this is something that we've been wanting to do for a while, to set up groups that are self-help groups, groups that have professionals that also can help them. So at the moment we're working with three different groups. Um, there's a group for transsexuals um, in different ages. There's a self-help group for LGBT plus people that will be run by volunteers. And then we're setting up an online counseling um, forum where anyone can log in and get support that they might need. Thanks for listening. Ora Ellingsgaard, thank you so much. Please stay with us, just stay up here. Yeah, thank you. Because um, we're going to have the last uh, to person to join the panel. And in about 10 minutes, we will open the floor for questions or comments. And um, so, happy to see, so happy to see that it's started to rain. So we get more people are joining us. That's good. Happy to hear the rain. And uh, so the last person will be a, uh, a, a um, representative from uh, the Grenendic representation in Denmark with his own uh, personal account and experiences in uh, Greenland growing up uh, gay. Please welcome Kim Falk Petersen.
Yeah, it's working. Oh, yes, yes, great. Yeah, hello. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, very much looking forward forward to, to this day. I, I was so honored when, when I was asked by Michaela to, to, uh, to uh, come up here and tell my personal story about being gay in Greenland. So first I thought, of course I want to do it, but what the hell should I talk about? <laughs> I was like, hmm, is, should it be my coming out story or should it be like a good, uh, like an overview uh, presentation about how the legislations came, came to be? But I thought, no, I'm, I'm just going to tell you about how my personal, uh, yeah, about my personal story. Um, so my name is Kim. I was born and raised in a very, very small town in the, in the northern part of Greenland. Uh, so I, I'm not sure if you know, but in Greenland, is, which is the uh, which which is the world's biggest uh, island, there's actually only uh, 56,000 inhabitants. So in these uh, 56,000 inhabitants, uh, I w um, in my birth town, uh, this, this day, and there is there is actually only 700 people uh, living in my uh, birth town. So you can imagine how things were, yeah, and things still are, of course. Um, so now I'm 41 years old, and as far as I can remember, I've always felt different. I've always felt different from my friends. Uh, I've always felt different from my schoolmates, uh, ever since I was a teeny, teeny tiny boy. Yeah. So I always remember uh, every time like you wanted to do a uh, dress up like in, for Halloween or something, of course I wanted to be a lady. I wanted to be a girl, of course, yeah, it was so exciting, but I didn't really understand why it wasn't so accepted because everyone just told me it's not uh, really uh, suitable for boys to be girls. So very early on, I was actually taught that being different was actually a bad thing. So this was also from me being a really, really small boy. I think it was, I was four or five or something, yeah. Uh, so from a very young age, uh, I was also told, as uh, I can imagine that uh, a lot of you can, uh, can uh, uh, have, have the same experience, it's like you were always told that, okay, boys should play with soldiers and girls should play with their dolls, etc., etc. In my hometown, it was boys should go hunting and girls should uh, learn how to cook, really. And actually, what I wanted to do was cook, because I was actually really good at cooking. So always, I was uh, quite, quite uh, different. Uh, let, me, let me see. Uh, from, and we, my family moved from my uh, birth town to the Greenland uh, capital in Nuuk. Uh, so, so when you hear this, that it's the capital uh, in Greenland, so of course you think about, okay, it must be a really, really big city. It really isn't, because uh, at that point, it was only about 15,000 people living in Nuuk. So it was actually still a pretty much different thing, because you were still, uh, uh, you, and you were still actually told that you, you were different, and being different wasn't a good thing. Yeah. Um, so I think I was, I, I was around, uh, 13 or 14, uh, and my, my puberty really, really kicked in. And so I really realized, okay, I'm not just different, I'm actually gay. Yeah. But uh, it wasn't actually that uh, easy to, to, cut, to come to that term to be, because I always knew that being different is, is very wrong, being different is actually not good. So I actually kept it in until uh, I think I think it was this, in the summertime when I was uh, 17 years old. I came out to my uh, very best friend, uh, and the first first thing she said was, "Of course, I've, I've known that from the first day I saw you. I mean, you played with dolls and you were good at cooking, and you know, yeah. But but and and they of course knew, knew me. So so of course, uh, yeah, it, it, it wasn't a big deal at all. So it was actually a big, pretty big eye opener because I really thought, okay, here we have a person who actually is accepting you. So I was actually thinking about, okay, maybe I should come out to all my friends and my family, uh, which I did. Uh, but it was actually quite, quite different because and this, this was uh, 24 years ago or something. Um, and so like LGB, LGBTQ uh, plus uh, issues wasn't really a thing in Greenland like at all. Like it was still being different, wasn't really uh, accepted in society. Uh, but this was, uh, fo fortunately, uh, during the times where the internet came. 
Yeah. So through the internet, I, I actually found, found a, a, an, an amazing uh, uh, forum. I actually f found a lot of actually closeted Greenlandic, uh, Greenland Greenlandic people uh, living all, all around Greenland, actually, which I be began to write with, actually. Uh, so I, th I, th I think after, after the internet came, uh, I, th I think it was around, I, th I think it was around tw 20 years old, uh, old or something, uh, it, it became more and more accepted. Uh, it, it was quite amazing because I, th I think it was uh, t t 10, 10 or 20 years ago, it, 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 a lot of things changed. Uh, like same same sex and marriage came came through and uh, and, and Greenland got its own uh, pride parade as well. So so it has been really really amazing. But I actually moved here to to Denmark uh, around uh, 20 years ago, and it was actually. I actually moved here to to study uh, here here in Copenhagen, but I actually had a pretty. Um, pretty solid idea about that I didn't want to go back to Greenland because I knew at that time that it wasn't really accepted for, for, for me to be in Greenland, yeah. which, which is actually quite, quite, quite a bad thing, of course. Yeah. Uh, it, it was actually quite, quite d d difficult to, to come to terms with. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but now, as, as, as I told you before, yeah, and now uh, a, a lot of things are much more, more better. Yeah. And now people are t more talking more about uh, LGBTQ plus uh, issues, yeah. Um, yeah, so now uh, I'm a, uh, all I can tell you is, is uh, I'm an out, proud, uh, gay, Greenlandic guy uh, living here in Copenhagen, yeah. So thank you for that. So thank you. Thank you so much, Kim. So, um, I'd like to know, you were told to play with soldiers as a boy. Do you play with soldiers now, as a grown-up? <laughs> In a different way, yeah, I know. I know you, Kim, he's my friend, I can say that. So, uh, <laughs> um, now we are going to open the questions uh, or comments uh, from the floor or online. So, if you're watching online, this is being streamed and you're more than welcome to give us your comments and your questions. Uh, Kim, so we talked uh, with, uh, just raise your hands if you're in, in this room, so we will uh, find you with a mic. Um, so Kim, we just talked with, uh, with Oda telling us about the first Pride in uh, the Faroe Islands and being surprised of the, um, the impact and the, uh, and the people supporting. Uh, so what, are you, what do you think about like a, 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 a Pride in, in Nuuk? How is, will, will that be a the future for, 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 for Nuke, or how do you see that happening in, in Greenland? Uh, I think what, what, uh, one of the proudest moments I, have, I had with my family was actually my, my parents and my sister participating in, 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 in Pride Parade in Nuke, actually. It, it was this, this, it was this, this uh, decade. I'm not sure if, if it was uh, 2013 or 14, yeah. but, but it, was, it was the first Pride in Greenland. Yeah. And how did people react? Uh, amazingly, amazingly, uh, I, I think what, what, what I personally really expected was a couple of hundred of uh, participants, but we, we talk about thousands. Yeah, I think there were around 5,000 or something participants. I mean, in a town of 17,000 uh, people, so it was actually 30 percent of the uh, of, of the whole uh, uh, town actually participating in Pride, and that uh, that actually made me feel so good and, and accepted also. Uh, uh, it, all, it almost felt, felt sad that I didn't get to experience it uh, when I was younger, yeah, so. And uh, Eva Maria, can you, can you tell us a little bit about the, like, um, uh, the, the um, well, obstacles being a gay in, in, in Faroe Islands and in Greenland? Do, are they the same obstacles and uh, the same, um, you know, the same uh, things they, they face? Or it, can you, like, compare to Denmark? about the three difference. Can you, can you say anything about that, Eva Maria, being gay in, in the realm, what, how the, the difference in the, the three, three countries? No? Bare tage mikrofonen, hvis der er. Du er mere tale om rettigheder. Ja, det er fint. I think I'm more uh, rights, uh, yeah. and especially with freedom of religion, so my yeah. colleague more... So, and and, and the, re the, re the religious part of yeah. the, um, uh, well, did you, did you experience that in, in, in Greenland, uh, Kim? Was that a, like an argument you'd hear that it was a sin? And is that still a, a, a thing 
that 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 people who are maybe homophobic would use as uh, or people against gays, or is that not a? No, I didn't really experience it as like like being a religious thing. It, it was more of a thing uh, coming from a cultural background. Yeah. Like it was more of a like boys go hunting and when women stay stay in the kitchen ish, uh, and it it was more of a things being different things that are taboo you don't really talk about so so things that that were different to talk about uh, like g being gay for example it was also always like shrugged un under the carpet uh, so you really didn't talk about it but but you knew it existed yeah so so you didn't really talk about it which was which is actually quite as hurtful as well because if you don't really talk about it it almost feels like you don't exist like yeah, if you don't address it, then then you're not there. Yeah, uh, so it's it's yeah. Sure, I understand. Fik du en mikrofon der noget? Nej. Vil du gerne have en? <laughs> det er godt. Uh, meanwhile, Eva Maria, so uh, people are talking about that priests in Denmark or Greenland or should not be able to refuse same-sex marriages or um, or ceremonies. Uh, to 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 do you think it would be a good idea to remove this possibility that priests can refuse marrying yeah. same-sex people? Uh, no, I don't think that's a good idea. And I think there's several reasons for that. Uh, first, I think from a human rights point of view, it might actually be a violation of freedom of religion uh, if a person cannot refuse. Uh, so that's one thing. And then I think, actually, I think maybe the the Danish church wouldn't have, have accepted same-sex marriage if there hadn't been that exception. And that's because, as I also told a little bit about, is that marriage between men and uh, between men and women is so sort of essential to the narratives of Christianity and created in God. And, 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 and therefore, I think it was a very, very big thing for the church to actually accept same-sex uh, marriage. And then I also think um, another reason why I think it wouldn't be a good idea uh, is that I don't think that same-sex couples would actually like to be married by someone who does not believe that it's the right thing. Uh, so overall, I think it's uh, fine that it's, it's there, and, it, and especially if it's not a problem uh, to actually have priests who are happy to make uh, uh, same-sex marriages. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question to order Ellingskov. You, know, you um, uh, mentioned that the church, the Ferris Church, or some people claimed that the Ferris Church was taking hostage in the LGBT plus debate. I'd like to hear more about that because, I mean, it's interesting that the church claims to be a victim. That's the first question. And the continuation of that question is, what, how has the, the debate between the church of very religious Ferris people, we know that the church in the Faroes is much stronger than in Denmark and also in Greenland. How has that debate evolved since you started this uh, quest for uh, improving um, or giving LGBT plus people rights in the Faroes? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so just to be clear, it wasn't the church itself who said that they were being held hostage. It was a lot of the people who were in the debate um, opposing the law. Um, and maybe not always themselves belonging to the church, but having opinions about it. Um, the church itself has remained pretty quiet. Um, there were priests who came out with opinions, their individual opinions, which, which they were uh, given, and there were some priests who were for, and there were some priests who were against. Um, in the end, the law is written in a way that um, same-sex marriage will not enter the church until the church has made a ritual to marry people of same sex. Um, the debate itself between the church, I think while it's not an active uh, public debate, I know that there are several... Can you still hear me? I think we got sound on the extra microphone, yes. It was on, I'm, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I lost my trail of thought. Uh, 
But um, I think there, there is an, an, um, an open debate but it, between individuals and, and members of the church probably. Um, I know that there are members within our community that are actively religious and that are um, sort of having count speaking with priests, but it's not something that there is an official public stance on. Um, yeah, so I, I think it's, um, the church has stayed pretty, pretty quiet, not opposing and not being for. And do you think the church has a, like a, a strong voice still in the Faroe Islands? Like, how can you move a, a, a opinion? Is that a people or the religion? Like, because because you've, you've you've seen how it it moved in, in decades here in Denmark. Um, so, what do you, do you think? Is that is it is it the the the, the church who is like a, a, a an opponent for homosexuals or other like strong people disguising homophobia in Christianity? Maybe. I I think hope, homophobia is everywhere. So. I mean, that you can always find. Um, I think that the way that it is at the moment is that it is with, so if the people who do belong to the church start saying, we really want to see this change, I think then it will be debated within the church and the church will amongst them take that debate. The church is still very strong in the Faroe Islands, as are other religious groups as well. Um, and I think there are different opinions about it. I think the good thing about it is that today it is more um, approved to um, live outside a life that's maybe outside religion. So to actually live a life where um, you're not sort of bound by some of the religious confinements, that's also fine. Whereas in the past, that might have been condemned more. Um, so a life outside of the rules is, is, is fine. Yeah, Eva Maria. If I could just add, add to that, I think that um, if you look at it historically, uh, even if we can think that LGBT rights are moving very slowly. It has actually been going extremely fast. So, um, and I think in contrast to that uh, very fast tempo uh, is the churches and different religious traditions who are generally very slow in, in, um, in developing its different traditions. So therefore you see within a lot of different areas that the churches and the different religious traditions, they are sort of uh, moving slower than the norms of society. So therefore it's actually quite uh, extraordinary that the, that the Danish people's church actually followed so quickly. And that is, a, is of course also because it's a, a, not a state church but has very st uh, strong links. Because if you look in Catholic countries, for instance, it's a very different story. Just wanted to comment one thing that when we were talking about the arguments against changing the law, one of the arguments was actually used that if we do change this law, we will end up with the same situation as in Denmark, that this was sort of our uh, sliding way into the church. So we were using this law as, as a way to get into the church. Um, so, so there was this uh, opinion that this was how we were trying to get it done. Oh, so Denmark is like a country would not be... So Denmark is like the Sweden of... Like, we, like how we... We, yeah. it, it we say Sweden, of, you say Denmark. Okay. It was sort of frowned upon. Yeah. Skramme. Skramme billede. Good. No. Um, so do you agree, Kim, on, on this, it, that it can maybe go too fast? I remember when I came out... Uh, you know, in my family, and after a few years, like, you know, I was like, I was rushing, I was like, I wanted them to accept this, I wanted them to accept my husband, me coming out in public, and I, you know, it took, it took quite a few years, and I, I thought it was too slow, and they, when I asked and I talked uh, with my parents, they said, you're, you're going too fast, you know, need to, to speed down. Um, so, so, do you think there's a thing, that it, it could, you know, go in the other way, it could just switch, uh, the the, um, the improvements you have in, in Greenland if, if we go too fast? No, I really don't think that. I really don't think so. I mean, uh, I, I w I've always been like this pretty open-minded guy, but 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 uh, I, I, I never in a million years could have anticipated how how fast it went and how accepting it pe people was in Greenland and how and how fast the the, the uh, Greenland government also worked for. Equality. I mean, it, it, it was amazing. I mean, uh, it, it was it was like this uh, small shift of, like, not really not talking about it 
as long as you are addressing it and talking about it and you get results and uh, hopefully you get good results as long as you have your heart in the right place in my opinion uh, it's uh, so yeah, yeah as, as, as long as you, you and you get to be honest about things and talk about things I mean and and, and this is also uh, yeah we're within the family I think yeah but do they compare Denmark to Greenland and you just heard that it was a, like a disadvantage to be in part of the Danish realm so do, mm. do, do you think that uh, people in Greenland are like looking at Denmark and saying no not not in this particular case I don't think no. so yeah, <laughs> many others yeah, yeah I know. many others <laughs> yeah. yeah many others I know yeah. Uh, so, Eva Maria, so when, when, you, when you hear uh, that, that, that some people, maybe in, in the Faroe Islands, are saying, uh, comparing Denmark, do you, ha, has it been an advantage or disadvantage to be part of our realm um, in this particular uh, case uh, for the well, countries? Yes, um, I think you can probably better answer, but if I can sort of, my uh, impression is that. Uh, it has been at a, it has been an it has been an advantage, and I think um, uh, because it has been put on the table, same-sex marriage, and even if in the Faroe Islands it hasn't been adopted fully, then it has been sort of put on the table that there are uh, it is actually possible uh, to have a a, a, a people search where you have. Uh, same-sex marriages. So, in that sense, I think it has pushed the agenda in Greenland and the Faroe Islands. But you're, no, you're nodding, Faroe, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so let's have a question from the yes, floor. Yes, we have a question down here, but before I get him to ask the question, will you please, when you talk in the microphone, bring it up? Don't swallow it, but just bring it up to your mouth, because then the sound goes clear out to the back. Thank you so much for your inspiring presentations. Uh, my question is primarily directed to Oda, I guess. Um, so in the Faroe Islands passed the same-sex marriage law four years ago. And, and I think there has still not been one single uh, same-sex marriage in the Faroe Islands between Faroe uh, uh, same-sex people. Am I correct in that? No. no? Th there has been a marriage? Yes. Okay. Well, I stand corrected. But, but my question is more to... to, to Perhaps to go back to the text that Michaela read, that uh, there's still uh, discrimination, uh, even in Denmark, there's still discrimination against same-sex uh, or LGBTIQ plus people in general. And you mentioned yourself that, especially uh, in the workplace, there has still not been implemented any protection. Um, why is it that the marriage uh, well, a same-sex marriage was so important and, and, and that the support for it was so large and still we're lacking when it comes to real protection of LGBT uh, pe people in the Faroe Islands. Yeah, it, it's a good question. Uh, I was actually thinking about it myself because it's sort of, since we've had marriage uh, equality, it's almost like the air has been let out of the balloon and, and we sort of, we're now kind of working to get our fighting spirit back. I think the fight for just bare minimum rights was so hard on a lot of people, and the debate that was going on in the public um, was was actually quite tough. And amongst sort of our groups, there's several members who sort of say, "I don't have the energy right now." Um, I think we've actually so we had um, we've just elected a new committee, um, and I think we've gotten some great, great people on board who are fired and, and ready to go. So, for example, you know, setting up these. Um, um, counseling groups, um, actually trying to get the, the, um, the discrimination law in the workplace actually up again, w talking and, and getting it right with the right people who need to vote for it. Um, so I think that we're, we're sort of gearing up again, but I think there was an element where we just were tired after um, a long battle that had for many been, been very hard and it was sort of this is just sort of barely letting us exist and being protected. Um, what's it gonna be like when we're asking for even more, which was also the argument that was used during a lot of the thing was, this is just sort of the first thing that you want, then you're gonna keep wanting more and keep wanting more. Um, and it, yeah, but we're working on it. And we're hoping that within the next year, we'll, we'll see um, movement on some of those things. Thanks. Was that answer enough? Yeah? Cool, and uh, so we'll take another question. Please do not take the mic in your hands because of a 
you know, corona situation, so. Yes. Yes, I just wanted to say thank you for coming, all of you. And uh, it's very interesting. And Kima, was, I'm very happy to hear that the development in the Greenland is, is going fast right now. But I was wondering what are some of the challenges that the LGBT community still faces? And that was one thing. And the other thing, the rights, I mean, this, the, the situation with the rights, I, do you have more rights in Greenland than the, that Faroe Islands or... Or do, is that also the same struggle there? Two very good questions, yeah. But, uh, and, and due to the challenges, I, th I think it would, it would be on... on, on um, and, and just by the fact that... And, and the towns and, uh, and settlements in Greenland, they, and they are so small. Uh, at, uh, and right now, I, th I think there are around nine, 19 towns and around 60 uh, settlements, uh, and, and it's 50, 56,000 people divided into these uh, like towns and settlements. I mean, and, and, and for me personally, it, it, it was it was it was too small. I mean, it, it was too. Uh, uh, so and and that's a big challenge. And for me personally, I mean, and you couldn't really meet meet other LGBT. Q plus uh, uh, people at all. So, so right there, what, what was the biggest challenge for, for, for me personally, actually? Uh, but, but due, due to le le legislation, yeah, I'm not so s strong in that in that regard. Yeah, but 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 we have come a long way. Uh, we really have. Yeah, uh, and I know a lot of uh, a lot of friends uh, in Greenland who has uh, for the same sex who has uh, who has married. Yeah. So. Do you know anything about the, the, the difference between the um, registrations and uh, the... Um uh, 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 I think that um, some, I mean, for instance, the EU, because Greenland is not a member of the EU, then there are, there are certain EU directors uh, that applies to Denmark, but is not relevant to uh, to Greenland. So I think it's partly sort of different uh, directions. But I'm not an expert in that. So Kim, the, the th this is not a, a, an unnormal situation that that the gay people in each, each city and, and and small cities will either move to a bigger city or out of the country to to a place where it's easier being an LGBT plus uh, person. So. Uh, being the fact that the most of you, both of you living here in, in Denmark and many moving out, what can you do if it's not visible, if it's not part of your workplace and in your media and television? So do, do you have any uh, ideas of what could you do to, to bring progress and to, to make it you know, normal uh, in your societies when, when people are moving out? That, that's a really good question as well because uh, a, lo a lot of the Greenlandic LGBTQ plus uh, people that, that I know also live here in Denmark, so 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 yeah, it's 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 a really difficult thing to to uh, address uh, in my point of view. I mean, it would be the same as I'm I'm, I'm guessing it would be the same as uh, why why do many uh, LGBTQ plus people move to bigger cities? How do we keep them in the smaller smaller cities? I, I think it would be the, the it would be the same challenges. I uh, I, I would say, but what, what can Greenland do to? To keep to keep people like me in Greenland, it's 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 so individual. I, th I think I think it's it's so individual that that yeah, it's, I, th I, th I think it's quite difficult to address. Yeah. Well, what could would you like to answer that, Oda? Uh, it was just because you mentioned what can we do to make it normal. Um, I, I think what we've been trying to do is to actually sort of put people out there, the ones who are brave enough to sort of say. I fall without a side of the lines. Um, and recently, um, we've actually had these, uh, it's very simple, but just like Instagram takeovers from, from our page. And the response has been huge and overwhelming and with very simple uh, outcomes, like people just saying, it's nice to see that you live a normal life like me and you go to work like me and your boss is you know, annoying like my boss. And, so that's part of actually making it normal, is to just show that the only thing that we do different is that we love in a slightly different way, but other than that, we, we live the same lives. Um, so we're trying to do a lot to actually show 
show that. And, and it's been great to see the people in our community have actually taken the microphone and been willing to, to share their life. So Kim Falk, you, you slightly uh, suggested that um, the Greenlandic people are like a bit tired of Danes telling them what to do, how, what to think, how to act. Um, so without doing that, but still being part of the same realm, what can we do here in Denmark to, to I don't know, not, not speed the process, but to, to be a, a part of, of this uh, journey, this fight, um, to, to help uh, without being judgy? <laughs> so how can people here in, in, in this country be a part of that? Um. And that's a very good question. Uh, no, it's... Um what, what, what I've actually, what I've always struggled with, uh, like moving here to Denmark, be, 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 being uh, being gay, I, I, th I think I always thought that things would be so much easier. Like I would get so many friends, and I, I would start to get dates and get boyfriends and so on and so forth. But what uh, one thing that never crossed my mind was, was uh, I was actually going to be like a minority in a minority, uh, meaning that not only that I would be. Uh, uh, like like uh, a gay person uh, moving here to Denmark, but I was actually be a Greenlandic gay person moving here to Denmark, and that was that was actually extremely challenging. Uh, I, I, I think it has to do with uh, there the, there is still this uh, cultural uh, cleft, uh, uh, cult, cultural extreme cultural difference, a bit, yeah, a cultural gap uh, between Green, Greenland and, and Denmark, and. It, it always has been there, and, and it's still there. Uh, so, and we actually talked about it uh, to, today as well, Michaela. It's, it's about how, how many Danish people know stuff about Greenland, and, and it, it's not a lot actually. Uh, so, if, if you look at like school books and if you look at history books, uh, Greenland isn't really re represented there at all. Uh, I, I would actually say that if, if you ask like any. And, and any a, a, a Dan Danish person here in Denmark, like, do you know a lot about Greenland? Not really, they, they, they would answer. And that's actually quite interesting, especially thinking about Greenland and Denmark have, having the same history for over 300 years. Uh, so that's actually a, a struggle I really didn't uh, anticipate meeting here in Denmark. Like, yeah, it's, it, I, th I think it comes, I think it comes from and, and, and this is actually just a guess. Uh, I think it comes from uh, 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 like 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 ha having a bad a bad sense of addressing like Greenland have be being uh, 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 like uh, uh, a, 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 a colonial from 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 Denmark. Yeah, it, it has been re really a d different, uh, not different. Uh, Difficult to 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 address from 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 the Danish point of view, I, th I think which still resonates uh, the, to to this day. I, I would think. Yeah. So so having Danes um, talking about this with you guys would maybe have the opposite effect, or, uh, depending on how how they address uh, this. Absolutely, I can yeah. ab absolutely, uh, and and I think we all can, can. I think we all can agree on it would be. It would be best to address things like equally and yeah. not uh, address and like not, not talking down on yeah. on someone. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, uh, like ad addressing each other with respect. Mm. I would Sounds say. good. Yeah. I just so in terms of politics and politicians aligning with the pharaohs, I, I don't have the answer for that. I think a lot of politicians sort of steer clear of it. Um, in terms of what Danes can do, I, I meet the same thing. I, I don't meet an overwhelming amount of, of Danes who are well informed about the Faroe Islands, either sort of the past history with Denmark or even the current state. Um, and it just sort of reminded me that the day when, um, sort of the day after we had the law to, to change um, ma the marriage law, um, I went into the office and I was super excited and shared with my colleagues. Um, and, and I have a colleague come in and he's like, well, what are we celebrating? And I was like, well, m marriage equality has been passed uh, in Pharaohs. And he looks at me and goes, Do, can people not get married on ferries? And I was like, no, no, the Pharaohs. F ferries? The Faroe Islands. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know they couldn't do that. So it's... I think that's pretty common. Maria? So does that mean 
in both Greenland and the Faroe Islands that the civil society in Denmark, the Faroe Islands and Greenland do not see themselves as part of the unity of the realm in the sense of uh, working together across Denmark, Greenland and the Faroe Islands? If, if I make a sweeping generalization, I would say no. Okay. But that's the people that I meet. So there might be others out there who feel different, but that's not my impression. But do you think that would be a good idea or...? or um, I think it would be or, wonderful. Yeah, I, th I, th I, think, I think the same as well. I mean, if, if you historically th th uh, look at how things have been addressed and how things are still being addressed, I, I, I would see it. I, I, I don't see it. I really don't, yeah. And I think we have a question from our, our online viewers. Yes, we actually got a few questions. Uh, Dave, first of all, I want to thank you for the panel. Uh, These are really been great speakers. But uh, the question here, and I will add the second question to it, it is, uh, I would like to ask, what is the legal situation, law, in regards to transgender people rights in Denmark? Um, that would like, that we extend to both Faroes and Greenland, uh, especially because we also have one who asks, what is the situation of legal protection of trans people in Greenland and uh, is there any healthcare specific, uh, yeah, things there? So Kim, I know you're just here representing yourself. So I don't know if, if you've uh, even anything about the the Grand Lake law. Do you, Eva Marie? Do you know? Uh, you're, you're looking the other way, so you don't want me to. No. <laughs> I know you now. <laughs> Oda, do you know about the trans um, laws? <laughs> The, minim, the bare minimum I okay. know is, mm -hmm. as they mentioned, that there, there's no treatment in the pharaohs. So there is, you can go to your doctor or seek health professionals and, and you will get referred to the Danish system. Um, when you then come, the challenge that we have is that when you then come back to the Faroe Islands, um, it is very different, difficult to get recognition of, of the change that you've gone through on any legal documents. Exactly at what stage that change can happen, I'm, I'm not well informed enough about, but I know that that is one of the main challenges, just to get your passport, your driving license. Um, those are some of the things that we have people on the ground who are actively working on. Good to, to hear. Casper, do you have a question? Yes, we have a question from down here. Uh, it's partially been answered, but it's for both uh, countries. The Faroe Island made a good marketing uh, process with, uh, well, the first gay pride was like 10% of the population participating, so we had like 52,000 inhabitants and 10% of that is in the, on the first parade. Uh, but they did a very good marketing effect, maybe for the Greenland should do, because they uh, took all the famous fairy uh, people inside of sports and other that were a lot in the news, and those who were, gay or part of LGTP and put them on papers, on the news and platforms, whatever, and that made a huge effect of, hey, we are here, we're, they, were, they were making it opposite, they're not pointing the fingers, just letting them know, hey, this is me, I am a gay or I'm lesbian, whatever. That made a positive effect and maybe it's something that you should do in uh, Greenland. Kim, how does that sound? Yeah, no, absolutely. It, it is actually already being done. Like, uh, uh, and, and, and I'm, I'm not really a big fan of using the term gay, gay ambassador, but, 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 but I'm doing this uh, in this regard. And, and, there, are, and there are actually uh, a, a lot of uh, gay ambassadors in Greenland, so uh, and they are also big in both social media, and they also work with uh, uh, e e equality, and they also work with uh, pride actively as, as, as well. Yeah, so, so yeah. Yes, we have a question more. Uh, yeah, so I just want to say, so I came here thinking that I was going to go in and listen to a lot of, um, you know, like Trump and Corona and uh, everything else going wrong in the world. Uh, but it's been really nice to hear that there's uh, some really cool good things going on. Um, so, and it, and it made me sort of think about uh, being quite involved in the civil society here in Denmark, but also knowing uh, how racist and transphobic, etc., that the gay community can be. Um, I'm really sort of curious to know how, 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 how can we, as Danes or Danish sort of gay LGBTI civil society, be better, or do you, uh, do you need us to be better at helping you, or is that sort of, I don't know, 
I'm just really curious about that because I've really, I found it so interesting in what you said, Kim, that, that you found yourself to be part of a minority within the minority. And we know that from organizations like Sabah, et cetera, et cetera, how important it is to actually sort of be uh, sort of supporting, um, yeah, that, that sort of movement ahead. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, uh, it's and, and and what you can do, uh, you just you just just come up to me and say hi would would be a first step. I, th I think I would say, uh, so that 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 had actually been like a pretty big struggle. Actually, it was like people not coming up to me and say hi or just wanted to be friends or something. Uh, it's it's uh, just just because you come from Greenland, maybe. So so that that. That crazy thing I have actually struggled with for quite some time. The people uh, avoid you for being from Greenland. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like, what are you doing here? Like, being from Greenland, like, shouldn't be sitting drunk somewhere or something? Yeah, so it's like, like these really horrific, uh, uh, ho horrific, uh, uh, what, do, what do you call it? Um, slurs. Yeah, so slurs, slurs, like really, really racial slurs, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's I get that still to this day. Yeah. yeah. So, so you need us who maybe... Just uh, be nicer. See, of course, but if, yeah. we, if we witness this, uh, to, to stand next to you maybe, and, 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 and of yeah. course, uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. taking your stand. Yeah, That's absolutely. the best thing in the world, isn't it? When you're being harassed or something, that someone who's just witnessing this to, 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 to take part in, and to, be, to stop it so that you feel you're not alone, right? Yeah, Oda? I mean, we had a lot of allies in the Faroe Islands. It, it, was, it was wonderful. I mean, obviously, we had a lot of people who were opposing as well, but we had a lot of allies who were really actively fighting with us. Um, but in my experience, that's been more secluded to the Faroe Islands. Um, and as I said, I, I did not feel that beyond the Faroe Islands that many people are that um, informed about the challenges that we had. Um, so actually, you were asking sort of what can we do better. Um, if I sit and talk to you, I'm from the Faroe Islands, um, then to actually, you know, some of the, I'm privileged enough that I don't have any sort of stereotypes that are thrown at me, but I think I do meet a lot of people who are not very well informed about what's going on. Um, and a particular at the time when we were changing the marriage law, people were just sort of like, oh, but it's legal in Denmark, isn't it in the Faroe Islands? So just the, the basic structure of how the legal system works between the two countries it doesn't mean that if it's happening in Denmark, it's happening in the Faroe Islands. And when I say we actually get to decide on a few things ourselves, I think people are also surprised to hear that. Um, so just being a little bit better informed and being allies, helping us sort of build that, that pressure that needs to happen to change laws would be wonderful. So, so which laws do you, would you like to change? The anti-discrimination law within the workplace. Um, the uh, the laws for um, gender change within sort of the, the legal um, community and then I think even just like there's a, such a simple thing as we talked about just funding the work that we're doing we have a really hard time getting organizations to donate money to us a lot of organizations don't want to publicly sort of be associated with the organization because it's too dividing um, it's quite split, so if you decide to support LGBT, yeah. you might actually lose half of your customers. So, uh, so you don't have the term pinkwashing just yet? Like people are not... <laughs> that's, you don't have NATO. You don't have NATO in Fair Airlines no, we or 7-Eleven? Ah. No. Okay. No. Because here we, it's we very, do. very... Yeah, yeah. No. No. Okay. no. So that's... So it's... I think people also will donate to, to Pride, but actually a lot of the work that might be behind it, yeah. um, we, we would love some more support. Cool. So we are... Almost in the last five minutes, I think. So maybe the last question, yeah? Comment? Uh, we also have a question online, but we have seven minutes, so maybe we have time for it. Well, would you do my job then? Okay, we'll take that afterwards. <laughs> this one. Okay. Um, hi, I have a question to Kim. Um, so I was wondering, and I don't know if this is, if it's a little abstract, but I was thinking um, about this discourse in Greenland about self-determination and the increasing awareness on post-colonialism and human rights in general, if, if that in some way or the other is intertwined or interlinked to the conversation about um, gay rights in Greenland, do they intersect, um, I mean, this increasing awareness on self-determination? Or is it, uh, I don't know, or, or not? <laughs> 
And that's a really interesting question. Yeah, I'm not sure actually, but 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 uh, actually now that you say it, I, I can definitely see a link to it. I can definitely see a link to it. Uh, I, I, th I think it, I think in terms of like uh, having this growing uh, growing sense of uh, like having to have a home rule and self government and and uh, on on the long like, on the long run being fully independent. Uh, so I, I, th I think so. Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, and, and that would also intertwine, like having equality. I think. Yeah. And the last online question, maybe. Yes. yes um, it is a more broad question. Um, one as is asking that it seems that the world is getting more divided. Uh, does that have any inf effect on the LGBT community? And if it does, which effect would it have? Yeah, let's see it in. The more the world is getting more divided. Do we uh, experience that in the LGBT community? Would you say yes? Sometimes no. Don't you think we sometimes have like internal battles within the LGBT? Like uh, I experience that. I think sometimes someone, you know, one group not not supporting the other group. Is that? Uh, I think between us, we often also work to understand each other. Yeah. Um, so as I was saying, you know, within the Fair Alliance, we're still using LGBT um, to, to sort of represent the work that we're doing and the conversation to, you know, which letters do we extend to? Like, where, how do we actually organize ourselves around that? Has, has been discussed a lot. But I would say at the moment, it's not the biggest debate that we're having. We're having other things that's sort of taking our focus. But um, with, with the world getting more divided, um, I, I think when you see someone like Trump actually then taking away rights again that, that have been passed, I think that just brings up some level of insecurity within all of us. Um, and as I mentioned to the election, when you then hear politicians campaigning on, well, elect me and I will make sure that we remove these rights. Um, so I think that's when it becomes a little bit scary, when we become more and more divided and we see politicians who very aggressively campaign on these topics. But within our community, I don't experience it that so much. That's great to hear. Anyone have had sister? Do you like to have a last comment uh, with that before wrap it, wrapping up? No? Well, guys, it's been so uh, very, very interesting to, to hear about uh, both the difficulties and also the same battles and stories that you have within the realm. Uh, thank you so much. I'm sure that uh, people can uh, can walk up uh, in a few minutes and ask you a few questions if they uh, remember to have clean hands or wear a mask. Uh, good, guys. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for participating today. And a big thank you to Abdel. I will just go to Danish now, fordi jeg vil gerne gøre lidt reklame for vores næste arrangement herinde, der er Kvinders Kærlighed til Kvinder 2.0. Og det er simpelthen efterfølgeren på det arrangement, vi havde i Vinterpriden, hvor Karine Lutzen forklarede om Kvinders Kærlighed til Kvinder i løbet af årrækken. Og er den 80 til 1980 stykker, så Pernille Ibsen vil følge op med hendes aktuelle bog nu her, et, øh, oh, hvad var det nu, den hed? Undskyld. Det, et åbent øjeblik, og det var rigtig spændende sidste gang, så jeg vil helt klart anbefale, at man kommer og hører det den her gang, for at følge lidt mere med i 70'erne, rødstrømpebevægelsen og hvad der skete deromkring.